what's up everybody welcome to a new video today we're going to be answering one of the questions here on the one product store setup i was supposed to continue the series today and finish up all the uh i guess you could say the minutia the smaller details like the newsletter and things like that but uh, we have a question on the one product store so we're going to tackle that question first and then maybe tomorrow we'll jump into the video where we finish uh, the quick series. Uh, for those who don't know, we basically built a store in literally 20 minutes, and this is kind of how it looks. The only thing we didn't do is like the upsell, we didn't do the newsletter, uh, we didn't do all that, and that will be once again tomorrow. Um, but the question that I got was from uh, Exec. Sorry if, sorry if I don't know how to spell or read your name, uh, but he says, hey, my question is that I have a one product. I have one product, but with a lot of different colors, and I want to make each one separate, uh, a separate product to put on my front page. How would I do that? And um, here I asked him, so what? Like you have a bunch of different variations. And he says, yeah, basically has different var variations for the product, but he wants them to be kind of separate. And so this is uh, completely possible. And uh, just remember that creativity will reign supreme. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into editing the store so you guys can see what I did here. So prior to getting this comment, the idea was just creating the store based on one product with no variations, right? Um, other than size, of course, as you guys could see, that was kind of the only concept. Uh, but until we got the question... I thought, well, how can we actually structure this idea? If we have different colors and different variations for the product that kind of make it, in a way, the same product but yet different, how can we showcase that? How can we show that to co the consumer base? Uh, and it's actually not that hard. So f for this section right here, this is ideal for the sale part of the product, right? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have to get rid of that. Before we do that... We have to add the products, right? So I added a quick few variations right here. So we have this variation, this variation, and this variation for the product. Let's just make sure they're all active. So just select them all here. Make sure we go here and set as active. And then we'll just also make sure that we don't have to worry about the stock uh, for them. So let's just go over here to edit products. And I don't want to kind of worry about the stock counters uh, for the sake of the video. So let's just go over here to, um, uh, let's see here, inventory quantity. And anything that's zero for these top three, let's just go ahead and change that to a one. And that's it. All right. So now essentially every product is in stock except for the original main product, size 13, size 11. And remember, I did that for a reason, so I could show kind of the notifying feature, right? So you see that little animation at the X here, and then just enter the email to be notified when the product goes out of stock. But let's just go ahead and edit the home page, and I'll show you guys what I would do in this case if I did have different variations uh, for my Shopify product. And this is actually pretty normal. What people do is they tend to outgrow the one product that they're selling and they start to change things. So what would really happen in this case is there's a section here within the theme. This is the Thomato Shopify theme, guys. For those who don't know, um, you would go to one product theme.themato.com to get the theme. They have a lot of stuff uh, where they talk about the theme, but basically it's pretty simple. If you want to order it, you literally just click order now and it will essentially take you to the cart page uh, where you get to pay for it. This is just like one of their advertising pages, their landing pages. You know, every kind of website has this where they describe the benefits of the theme. All right. So let's just hop over here. Okay. Yeah, here it is. This is the cart page. So it's already added. Also, guys, keep in mind they have a coupon use code SUMMER to get 10% off. So you just type in SUMMER here, hit apply coupon, and you get 10% off your order. Uh, but anyways, back to what I was saying here. The theme that we're using, we have a little bit of flexibility here. This is a one product store theme, guys. Um, I don't know of any stores that are out there that are exclusively one product store themes. Uh, I've done my research. A lot of them are built specifically for, uh, you know, building a brand, building many products, selling many products. Um, but this one product store theme is originally designed for 
one product stores. And so if you do have many variations, uh, like the, you know, the comment said, this is kind of what I would do. So first thing I would do is I would kind of take this away. This is the main aspect. I would kind of take this away unless this is, well, here's the thing. You have an option. You can keep this area. Let's just go ahead and refresh this. You can keep this top banner for the product, uh, focal point, but, and you can add the variations here. However, most people, I mean, you could do that. It's optional. It's it's really how you want to set it up. But I, I'm just going to make it disappear for now. Now what I'm going to do is I want to add some top uh, pixels. So, so like some distance here because this thing is really high up. So instead of 100 pixels, let's go with 300 or 400. All right. So we got some space just so I can see what I'm doing here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this product slider, the Amato product slider, and I'm going to actually select the products. Now, I might not have an upsell section, so let me head over here to the documentation. Let's click on documentation. I know they have an article here on upsellers, the Amato One product store documentation. Uh, let's see here, upseller feature, okay? So basically what this feature is is you're going to have to name it upsell. So you go to the product and you tag it, call it upsell. All right, and then it will supposedly show up. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's head over to our products. Let's go to products here. And let's just add these three products that are not the main product as an upsell. In your case, you're going to have all of them equal in the same boat, in the same category, right? Um, and we're going to just, uh, let's see if there's an add tag option. There, there is. So we're going to call it just upsell just like the way the documentation tells us. So the documentation, what does it say here? It shows literally no no caps, no spaces through the word, just literally the word upsell. Let's go ahead and hit save here. Let's, I clicked add product, but we don't need to do that. Now let's go to collections. So select the product and then hit collections and then create the actual upsell collection, All right? So for me, I'm going to have to call it upsell because I, when I, I want when somebody to add a product to their cart, I want, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. When you add a product to the cart, I want the section right here to show the related products. So let's go back and let's hit manual here. Or let's go back and, uh, yeah, let's hit manual. And we'll have to select what products we want in there. So let's hit browse and let's select the three products that have the upsell tags. And let's go back. Let's go to collections. And there's a chance I could do this wrong, but let's just see what we got going on here. So let's open up our product slider once again. Let's go to edit collection or not edit collection. Let's go to change and let's select whatever collection is existing. So all right, so we're it's already selected. Um, so let's just go back up here and scroll up or let's make it visible rather. That's kind of my mistake. And there we go. It's visible. So this is like really enlarged right now, but let me just hit save and we'll reload and kind of wait for it to update itself. And there you go. So it's kind of regular size now. So basically what I would do in your case is I would just take these products here and I would just drag it all the way to the top. That's all I would do really. And, of course, we can give us some, some spacing at the top. So instead of 30 pixels, we could do 300 and see how that looks, right? And hit save once again. It's enlarged, so we just want to make it a little bit smaller. And there it is. So notice the first thing that they hit or that they see is this. Now, you probably might want to move this up a little bit more. So when you're, you're creating multiple products for your, for your one product store, if you want like different variations or you want the variations to be visible, this is kind of the best way to go, right? And you want to kind of set it up as a, um, as a, as a carousel in a way, uh, you could set it up as a grid also, but since this is a benefit for us, we have a, a product slider. This is what we're going to do. So essentially this will be the main focal point for the purchase, right? Um, and what will happen is, is we can even add this under it and we can select any kind of uh, color, any kind of version, anything like that right here, like something that might sell the most. And you'd actually want to test it. You'd want to see which version out of all these sell the most. And you want to put it up here. 
And then after that, you could just literally show the products in different colors here in the product features in the news in the in the talk about the brand images. Same way, right? In the uh, in the um, Instagram gallery, f show the different images of the different products, the different colors. You know, it doesn't always have to be just necessarily one product. Remember that uh, one product stores, the framework of a one product store is built off of a multi product store. The only difference is it gives focus to one main product. In your case, since you have different variations, let's just say colors. So, for example, these sneakers, they're literally all the same. They're the Jordan 4. The only difference is the colors are different, right? We have an all, uh, we have a yellow and white one. We have a blue one. We have a whatever color this is. We have like a brown one or a tan one. You're just showcasing the differences here. And consumers can go ahead and click add to cart, right? And when they add to cart, guess what? They have the upsells in the bottom here. And and this is important because when you have multiple products like this, you want to encourage the idea of multiple orders and multiple, or excuse me, not multiple orders, but multiple different products in a single order. And what that will do in return is it will increase your average order value right? Because it just obviously makes sense, right? Like if I buy this product, I say, Ooh, I like this one. Size 11 is not available. Let me go ahead and buy size 12. I click add to my cart. Well, guess what? Now I have three different options here. And this is just one step away from increasing your average order value, right? Even if it doesn't work, it's perfectly fine. It still has the chance to increase your order value. Um, and here is an incentivization. So basically what you're saying is if, if the order is over X amount, right? You want to give them free shipping. Now, in my case, um, or in your case, rather, what you want to do is you want to give free shipping when two products or more are ordered, right? Because that will help increase your average order value. Um, because let's say, so for example, um, this is a bad idea because the prices are so high, like it doesn't work logically. If the prices are so high, if a consumer is going to be willing to pay $1,400 for a pair of sneakers, they don't care about free shipping. That, that's just in general kind of the concept. But um, think about it this way. If let's say the product was $50, $60, what you want to do is you want to set free shipping at, let's say, 100 right? Because or or even let's say $70 because that would mean that they would have to add two products to their cart to get the free shipping. And that would be a motivator for them. And here we have uh, a little thing that says, congratulations, you got free shipping. If I didn't have this product added to the cart, right, we have these four links, which I'll tell you how to change in the future, and I'll show you guys how to do. But I want to just, for the sake of the video, you guys know that $400 is the number to get free shipping. I'm going to change one of the products um, pricing just to kind of show you how this works. And so let's just change it to, let's just change it to 300 for example. And I'll show you why it incentivizes people. So it's saved. Let's head over back to our store here. Hit customize. Let's get rid of this link. Let's go to our cart. And let's just get rid of this, obviously. And let's just make sure that we, we have the right pricing here. Maybe I forgot to save the pricing. Yeah, there we go. So it's updated. 300. So if I click add to cart... Now look what it says. It says free shipping above of above orders of four hundred. Spend a hundred to get f free shipping, right? And it shows here we're seventy five percent of the way there. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a product to the cart. And obviously in your case, I doubt that you're going to have a fourteen hundred dollar product. Obviously, unless you're doing high ticket drop shipping, which is a different story. Uh, but here it says free shipping above orders over above four hundred. Con congratulations, you got free shipping. And here's the order total. And then what that does is you have a one-click checkout, whether it's on the on the pop-up here or even on your cart. Like if consumers decide they want to keep looking, then they decide they want to check out, they have the checkout button right there. But that's really what I would do. If I have multiple variations for a one product store product or a single product store, I would take the upseller, right? I, I would obviously rename it. I wouldn't call it the upseller. I think that's logical. But I would have multiple of the those products in a slider, which Thimato gives you that option, right? The only reason we don't see the slider here is because there's three of them. We, I could just show you guys how it works uh, for the fourth one. So let's go to products. Let's go to collections. And I'll literally just add the, the fourth product to the upsell just so I can show you guys how it works. Just like this. And hit the online store. And go back here and hit select the customize button. 
and you could see here kind of that's how it looks now little word of advice is you want all your images to follow the same format uh, just to look a little bit cleaner right just to look a little cleaner for so for example if this sneaker is this size you want this one to be the, the same size you want them to follow the same direction all that kind of stuff just make it look clean right but you could see here it is a slider that's kind of what I was trying to say here so consumers can kind of sift through and see what they're getting and um, you know you could change like you know the scroll bar you could show that let me just go ahead and save uh, you could show navigation right let me just save that wait for it to reload uh, there's all these different settings, you know, but in general, you guys kind of get the idea. Now, once again, it's going to look cleaner if all the product images are the same, right? It doesn't look clean right now because they're not, but, um, you know, take your flagship product, put it right under here, or you could even move it down a little bit more. The, you know, doesn't really matter. You can even duplicate certain sections like this, show off different colors of the product. You know, I wouldn't be... Uh, afraid to do that if I were you I, th I think there's really nothing wrong with that so this gallery here where you get to give descriptions of the product images where when somebody kind of takes their mouse and hovers over and zooms in this section right here is also beneficial show the different products and the different variations the galleries uh, do that as well here's the lookbook um, you know all these different kind of features and the thing that I would do is also like if you know I, in the image here like I would call it uh, you know, instead of like, like if you're going to showcase one product here, a certain product of a certain color, certain variation, just kind of label it like our, you know, highest seller or biggest seller, something like that. And that will kind of uh, intrigue people. Uh, another strategy is if you do have a product that's kind of lacking in sales or people just don't like that color, you can also showcase it here, whether it is via the lookbook, right? which is right here, or the shoppable product section here. And that could potentially increase conversion rates because of the rules of friction. Uh, friction is essentially when you make it, or less friction, is when you make it less hard for the consumer to hit the add to cart button and check out. The Instagram gallery, like I said, follows the exact same pathway, follows the same rules. You want to put the different variations, the colors, make it visible for people, make people want to click on them, take a look at them, right? All that kind of cool stuff. The blogs, if you are a blogger and you want to share some information about the blogs, showcase that all through the one product store. Remember guys that just because you have a one product store doesn't mean that you necessarily have to sh share only one product, right? The, these products, they, these businesses, they still have a catalog feature, right? They still have, you know, you can't really break the rules of Shopify. There are certain things that are just going to exist. Uh, I mean, unless you remove it, obviously, but that's, you know, different. Um, but remember that at one product store, the main focus is creating the homepage as the official landing page of the products to not only intrigue, but to achieve the sale. That's really the goals of that. So that's all for this video. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.